to Woodruff Woods. I've had a busy day today. I'm going to take you along for that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some IBC totes. We're going to talk some about some landscaping. And we're going to talk about all the things that I've had break on me today. Uh, it's not been a great day in terms of, <laughs> in terms of what I've broken. But, uh, you know, it happens. So, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, today I, I went down and uh, picked these up. I get them from a local mulch supplier. Um, and he's been pretty good to me about them. But he also gave me some pallets and I'm actually gonna walk with you and show you those. Um, I got a few more up at the, at the garage that I hauled in the back of the truck. I'll turn you around and show you these. Um, these are nice heavy duty pallets. It appears that this is uh, possibly five quarter board. Uh, it's not pressure treated or, or anything, it's just pine. But uh, these are really nice pallets. So uh, I grabbed what he had and, uh, and I figured, well, this will work pretty good to pile some wood on. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, I'm gonna get busy unloading this and uh, I'll let you uh, get some satisfying video of watching me take these off of the tractor. I'll be back with you soon.
Today, I was up in my dad's house. I took a few days off. I need to catch up on a few things. But while I was up there, I was clearing some brush, burning some brush, which I probably shouldn't have been doing today. It's pretty windy. But uh, with a couple of machines around, it's not all that dangerous. But anyway, I uh, I'm had a find here. Um, I've always wanted a boulder for my front lawn. So let me show you where I'm gonna put it, and then I'll show you the boulder. So I have this in my front lawn, and yes, I know it needs to be weeded, but uh, this time of year, I have a feeling that Mother Nature will take care of that for me. And uh, then we can spray it down here in the spring, make sure it's nice and clean. But anyway, I wanted to put a boulder in there, something to break this up, something a little different. So while I was at my parents' house, as I was clearing out brush, I found this rock. And I kind of like it because it's got some, uh, and I'll try to get in close, some moss growing on it. There's some more on this side. And then there's uh, whatever this stuff is. But uh, I thought it was a pretty good looking boulder. And you can see it's... Uh, pretty healthy uh, I don't know what that thing weighs but my tractor knows it it has something in the front when I uh, pick it up so um, so I'm gonna get it off of here and uh, put it over there and see how it looks So I think that looks pretty good. I think I need to rotate it a little bit. I don't know if I can actually move that. I need to give it a try. Oh, I can. It must be because it's on gravel. So I'm waiting for the wife, though. She can tell me how she wants it to look. So uh, I don't know. Free edition. We'll see. Uh, see what she thinks. So as you can see, I did a little damage to my carryall. Uh, apparently that rock shifted when I put it in there. Um, not sure how, but uh, probably my mistake. These screws weren't exactly, uh, the heads weren't exactly big enough to use here. So I guess I'll uh, have to do a little repair work here. Um, shouldn't be too hard, just back these out. And then I'm gonna try to find some screws with a bigger head to make sure that this doesn't happen again. As you can see it wants to pull away. I'm gonna cheat it a little bit. I'm gonna do something, maybe get some washers. Maybe I'll get uh maybe I'll get just find some bigger screws. Um you know actually maybe even a hex head might work a little bit better here, although I'd like to have them counter so that when I'm uh running this as a flatbed, I don't run into this issue. Because as I would run it as a flatbed, it would uh, would want to stick out here. It wouldn't want to close all the way. So uh, anyway, easy fix. Back to work. So as I was putting stuff back in my carryall, I noticed something that really disappointed me. And I'll turn you around. I'll show you what it is. 
if you look right there, my Mingo marker has broken. And uh, so anyway, it, it strikes me as kind of odd because if, uh, if it was to break, I would think it would break here because the pressure would be coming in in this direction. So anyway, I, uh, I actually contacted them. I sent them an email. I got a very quick response. They agree that this is a very strange situation and they're going to send me a new one. So I want to give a, a shout out to them for really great customer service. Um, that's probably a little over six months old. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm only on my second can of spray paint on it. And, uh, and that broke and they're standing behind their products. So uh, I know a number of you use these. If you have a problem, I encourage you to reach out to the company. They were really great to work with. And uh, I, I think it's important when uh, you find a company like that to, to tell them how much you appreciate their, uh, their support and their, them standing behind their product. So uh, anyway, got the carry all fixed. We're ready to go again. And uh, maybe we'll uh, take a look at the wood splitter. I think there's something broken on that too. Hey, so I'm down in the garage attached to the house and uh, I'm by my wood splitter. I've been having an issue with heat in the cylinder. Not to mention I found a leak in the cylinder, but I'm not exactly sure where it's coming from. I'm gonna try to show that to you, but I'm not sure I can. So with regard to the heat, there's usually two reasons you would get heat in a hydraulic system. One would be that you don't have enough reserve and so the fluid is is not having time to cool. I have changed the filter. I have changed the, uh, or I've topped off the, the fluid in the tank, in the reserve tank. So I'm confident that I don't have a restriction there. But uh, I am thinking possibly in the valve. And what I'm thinking, and I'm gonna turn you around and show you this. So this particular unit here, I had lost a screw. It was actually the one on the other side, which is a little hard to show. Anyway, this particular piece will back off of here. And this, as I move the handle, if I can show this to you, I'll get in close here. I'll move the handle. You can see that is what activates the flow. So I'm thinking that if I back this nut off just a little bit, I can get a little bit additional flow and therefore um, allow the fluid to circulate through. So I'm gonna try that. Um, that will be the next thing I try. And uh, hopefully that'll dissipate the heat. Now, as far as the leak goes, this is where it's leaking. So I was actually even showing Scheib this when he was here. I had thought it was leaking right down in this area, but it's not. I actually believe it's leaking, and I'm gonna try to get you where you can see this. Um, there is a little hole right there. And what I believe that hole is, is I believe that's where the lathe had actually had a divot in there to hold it in place as it's turned on the lathe. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what they're called, uh, but that's what I'm thinking happened here. So uh, I think um, either I do have a hole there, which I clearly do, and, but I'm thinking that when the oil gets so hot, the viscosity drops and therefore it's allowed to leak. So I'm gonna first try to dissipate this heat, see what happens. If it's still leaking, that's a pretty easy fix. I touch it with a welder and it should be good to go. So uh, today's just been one of those days. Uh, first the carry-all, <laughs> the Mingo marker, and a problem with the wood splitter. But hey, when you use equipment, it's gonna break from time to time. So anyway, uh, in a future video, I'll tell you how I made out with this. But uh, again, kudos to Mango Maker. I also want to do a shout out to someone uh, who's uh, been commenting on my videos, Adventures at Home. He's out there in Northeast Ohio. He does a lot of wood cutting, things like we like to do, splitting wood and so on. I ask you to give him a, give him a look. He's only got about 30 subscribers, maybe 40 at this point, And I thought maybe we could show him a little love. So uh, anyway, Adventures at Home, check him out.